This is GTV, always bearing fruit. One thing that's a universal truth about Japan is its fondness and affinity for cute, cuddly costume characters. You may have seen hundreds of Pikachu running around all over the land of the rising sun. And if you missed that, there's a whole army of other plush buggers that you just can't miss. The mania for these creatures will ebb and flow over time, but they are so ingrained, so saturated into the culture, one thing you can't call it is a fad. This is the story of one rising star who, 10 years ago, defied the odds, rode the wave, and embarked on a journey to be the most famous character this side of the Pacific in a long, long time. Oh yes, Funashi. A dear old friend to all, the little pear fairy plucked from obscurity to become the most famous Japanese talento of the 2010s, and likely for many, the most annoying too. From an outsider's point of view, it's quite easy to look at Funashi from afar, shake your head, and say, oh, that crazy Japan, up to its old antics again. And even on the island, it was quite puzzling why this screaming yellow zonker was so beloved. Coming out of nowhere, seemingly overnight, without much reasoning or explanation involved. This character, Funashi, appeared on the scene way back in the year 2013, and for a good number of years, daily, he, she, or it, was everywhere, on TV nearly 24 hours a day, or at least it felt like it, with additional appearances in CMs, PVs, CDs, DVDs, and a bunch of other acronyms. To understand the lay of the land in 2013, you have to go back to the turn of the century. No, not that one, the next one. As Japan entered the Zero Zeros, the nation as a whole started to adopt cute little mascots to represent their respective towns and cities. Officially, these are known as Yurukata, a portmanteau of the words Yurui, meaning calm or peaceful, and character. Yurukaras are meant to convey some image or feeling about the town it represents, and ends up plastered on every poster, menu, stop sign, tax bill, and you name it. Some make a lot of sense, such as Kumamon, a large friendly bear from Kumamoto. After the 2016 Kumamoto earthquake, Kumamon was a symbol of the support around Japan for the reconstruction effort in that area, so he really did a lot of good for his town. Other characters are a play on the name of the town, like Warabi using a wallaby as its character, or Fukachan from Fukaya. Some are just inexplicable, like Ageo City's Api, a weird thing. I guess they were late to the party, and there were just no original ideas left. By the end of the Zero Zeros, nearly every municipality in Japan, large and small, had a Yurukera in action. With all of these towns and cities vying to have the most popular character, it only made sense that eventually, parades, rallies, and contests would come about, which did happen often back in those days. Kumamon was always in the top three. But while all the love and attention was showered on the winner, the losers got a sliver of the limelight, usually to laugh at these designs and contrast them to Kumamon. Yes, much like the aforementioned Api, some towns just didn't have the right stuff, which often led to the people taking things into their own hands, creating a slate of unofficial Yurukara that were often better designed and more well-liked than whatever the official creation might be. That's where Funashi comes in. A store owner in the city of Funabashi, Chiba, came up with the concept of a yurukara for that town, a pear fairy dressed in a kindergarten uniform. The character first appeared as a drawing in November 2011, but sometime in 2012, the creator of Funashi had ordered a custom-made costume and began to post videos online. Yurukaras by nature are cute. They are also supposed to be inoffensive and calming to be around, but not Funashi. He would scream and wig out and go crazy, the exact opposite of what his Yurukara brethren are, and by all rights, ought to be. Oh yeah, and his name is spelled Fun, A-S-S, She! That has to be unintentional, or the creator of this thing is truly some kind of genius, yucking it up on a big pile of money down in Chiba. Hey. Who is the creator of Funashi anyway? Nobody really knows who the mastermind is. 
Some celebrities from Funabashi have been speculated to be inside the suit. And as a funny point of order, the trademark filed for Funashi is registered to Naka no Hito, meaning, literally, the person inside. So we may never really know. In 2013, Funashi made the jump to television, where the pair fairy told his sob story about being rejected from a recent character contest because Funabashi already had an official character, Funaiman, this guy, literally a human male, as normal, boring, and pedestrian as Funabashi itself. The pair fairy quickly surpassed Kumamon as the most well-known character in Japan and was quickly put into every kind of TV show possible. And man, did they really run this thing into the ground. Good quality comedy, talk, and news shows were upended by Funashi and his goofy antics. Really, Funashi is not very funny. But what is funny, at least to me, is the way some outsider managed to upset the whole apple cart. A 140 billion yen business, which was meant to highlight tiny, middle-of-nowhere towns raise some awareness about them, and then, either out of curiosity, guilt, or maybe both, you go there one summer day and spend a little money there. That was all ruined because of this thing. I will say there was one time Funashi gave me an honest laugh. He was invited to an eating segment on some TV show. I know I say segment as if there's actually anything else on some of these TV shows. And the way Funashi eats is so weird and hilarious. Funashi eats by opening up a little door in the back, and then whoever is in the costume puts a hand out and takes the food, then eats it, opens up the little door again, and returns the plate. Which begs the question, is Funashi supposed to be the character, or is it the person in the costume? Let's take a quick station break and cover all the various Funashi media that was cooked up over the last decade. ふな、ふな、ふな、ふな。はあ。なしじるぶしゃ。ねえ、約束だよ。私のお家ができたら遊びに来てね。感じのお家なら行くなし。感じ。もちろん感じです。よかったなし。素敵なお家なし。Among the hundred trillion TV appearances Funashi made, the pair fairy somehow found time to make all kinds of other media. Funashi recorded and released four CD singles between 2013 and 2019. They all follow the same joke and ride the one-hit wonder wave all the way. Maybe I need to take a sidebar to explain exactly what makes Funashi funny, at least when he talks. Because his name is Funashi, he also ends a lot of sentences with nashi, which is the Japanese word for pair, and often just she, which is a way to connect clauses in a sentence. It's kind of like and or yeah so in a conversation. The songs are all kind of the same, and the first one, at least, was the official theme song of Funashi. That peaked at number eight, on the Japanese Oricon music charts. Then, Funashi released an album of heavy metal covers. Part of the character is that Funashi loves heavy metal. So on top of being a pair, a fairy, and a kindergarten student, Funashi is also an edgelord. While this may seem like overkill, wait till we get to the DVDs. It's really just Funashi going to different places, looking at stuff, talking to people, and eating. Like how nearly all Japanese TV is. There was one where he went to Antarctica. Really, for real. So I guess that would be kind of fun to see. Now let's get to the good stuff, games. Much like how Funashi clogged up the TV with his antics, the pair fairy started making cameos of all kinds in games. Now, seeing as Funashi is a top 10 music artist, it only makes sense that these songs would appear in rhythm games. And they do. Taiko no Tetsujin, Dance Evolution, Pop and Music. All the big names are covered. And hey, those are actually fun. You are supposed to challenge yourself to fast music, and there is a lot of redeeming value in that experience. Funashi also had a version of Puzzle and Dragons. It is what it is. And if you like Puzzle Dora, then you'll like this version. If not, you won't. One more cameo of the pair fairy popped up in Gotochi Tetsubo. Each station has a different Yurukera waiting for you. 
at Funabashi, it's, you guessed it, Frank Stallone. No, no, wait, not Frank Stallone. I misread that. Uh, note to self, don't drink milk tea over the script anymore. Saving the best for last, yes, there was an honest-to-God, proper Funashi game, titled in English, Pear Juice Action, Funashi's Amazing Story, released on April 30th, 2015, by success for the Nintendo 3DS. I am not going into this with a lot of confidence. The story of the game involves Funashi searching for missing items that were stolen from his friends, so it's up to the Pear Fairy to save the day and find them. In each stage, missing items like a bowl of ramen, fresh fish, ancient fossils, well, in case you can't figure it out, all of these missing items are things that Funabashi is famous for. Well, famous in the Japanese way that they aren't necessarily famous, but whenever you meet someone from a different area of Japan, he or she will prattle on endlessly about how a footnote to a footnote about Japan makes that place uniquely unique. And if you've lived in Japan for at least 15 minutes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll also find photos of tourist spots in Funabashi along the way too, like a dinosaur park and some beaches. All of these tourist traps and the missing items have an explanation about them on the second screen. Then the information is saved in Funashi's storybook, so you can go back later and look at them. And it serves as a progress meter for the game, because once you've collected them all, you've basically 100%ed the game. Hey, why are all these things missing anyway? Simple, a witch took them. This witch will pop up from time to time and taunt our hero about never being able to beat her many challenges, which we'll get to in a few minutes. The game is played out over five different worlds, Funabashi City, Natch, the Haunted Forest, the Beach, Dinosaur Land, and the World of the Fairies. Each of these is divided up into sub-stages, kind of like New Super Mario Brothers, and also kind of like New Super Mario Brothers. Each stage has three golden coins you have to find as part of your 100% completion quest. They're pretty easy to find, so don't worry. Also, again, like New Super Mario Brothers, some of the enemies look like strange knockoffs of said game. Funashi can jump and kind of fly, a lot like Yoshi. You know what? You're probably a lot better off just picking up a Mario game. Funashi also has the power to spray Pear Juice, his method of attack in the game. The Pear Juice will stun an enemy for 5 seconds, after which you can bypass safely or use the enemy as a jumping platform, which is required to reach some golden coins. Naturally, if you touch one while it's moving, you lose a life. Peaches, for reasons unknown, not pears, give Funashi a protective shield, good for one hit, just like in Sonic the Hedgehog. There are also mid-stage goal posts represented by bottles of water. Drinking one will send you back to that point after losing a life, rather than the beginning. And funnily enough, Funashi drinks the water by putting the bottle through the door in the back of the costume. There are also immovable obstacles throughout the game. Just touching it triggers an animated sequence where Funashi powers up and clears the way. The witch that gives the game some semblance of a plot is waiting at the end of each of the five worlds to offer up a challenge. It isn't a traditional boss battle, but rather one of five mini-games randomly chosen. Here they are. With a name like Funashi Kart, you would think you'd be playing a basic rip-off of Mario Kart, but no. It's a downhill racer instead. Move Funashi down the slope and avoid the witch's attacks by breaking or hitting the gas. Cross the finish line without getting hit to win. In Pear Fist, you must use Funashi's karate skills to smash through layers of concrete bricks. Hey, Sega Sanshiro had the same game too. It's fairly simple. Land the pear on the right spot on the power meter to smash through the bricks and get the high score. Yakiniku Match is a game like Memory. Flip the meat over, match the correct image. In this case, how well done the meat is and win. Very simple. In Goalkeeper, it's your basic soccer shootout. Hit the power meter dead center to block the ball each time. There are a few funny animations depending on whether you block or miss. Then there's Smash Pair Roll, basically Pong. I mean, if you've played Pong, then you know exactly what the game is and how to play it. It's supposed to be air hockey. It's just not very original. In addition to these games appearing at the end of each world, you can try them out from the main menu as many times as you like, with three levels of difficulty, for practice or just for fun. Funashi's full-fledged game isn't bad, but it certainly isn't good either. There's just nothing memorable about it. The graphics are interesting enough, but after a few minutes, you realize it's basically the same thing over and over again. The gameplay is almost boring, with not nearly enough challenge. 
The notebook of facts about Funabashi is probably the most fun thing in the game, just because it's so oddball to see these things in a game. It gives you a nice laugh about it, in a meta way. The game is simple and too easy. Not as easy as Jetman for the family computer, but it's up there. And the game doesn't carry over any of the humor or wackiness Funashi brought to TV or music. That's not his fault. That's just the super high barrier that comes from translating something from any other form of media into a video game. Something that is rarely well done. Let's take one more time out and find out where Funashi is today. After all he's done in this world, it's hard to believe it's been 10 years since the first time Funashi graced our TVs. Recently, I haven't seen the Pear Fairy around so much. Do we really live in a post-Funashi world? Funashi Mania is certainly dead and gone. The last game appearance was in 2018. That was just a reissue. While the last CD single was released in 2019, it failed to chart. In 2022, you can still catch Funashi on TV, but you are really gonna have to try your luck. Funashi hasn't retired, but in recent years has scaled back the appearances. In 2014, Funashi was on TV 102 times, officially, not counting reused clips. By 2018, that number was down to just four. Expect a similar number this year and the next. When asked, Funashi said, very seriously I might add, that the TV grind is too difficult and some of the stunts he was placed in were too dangerous to keep going. That's a good point. The person inside the costume, Naka no Hito, might be some 97-year-old lady. You don't know. And by the way, that person, according to internet lore, is a shop owner. Shouldn't this person be getting back to work soon? Selling whatever the store has? So, in the end, it was a good long run this Yuruketa had, with some fun novelty songs and some okay games as well. Yes, Funashi is still around, even if all we think about is the good memories left behind and nothing more. Whenever you see a pair or pass through Chiba, you can always remember the little character that could, and at least this time, actually did. <laughs> 